We first, though, want to get to those new headlines this morning. Coronavirus cases worldwide are now topping a million. And take a look at just how quickly it spread here in the U.S. This chart showing where we were just on March 20th. There were 19,000 cases here. Now there are close to a quarter million cases. And of course, New York is still the hottest spot in the country right now. And Whit Johnson starts us off from the Javits Center in Manhattan, where they are about to start taking COVID-19 patients. Good morning, Whit. George, good morning to you. The military is really stepping up in a new role here. The Javits Center was converted initially to act as an overflow hospital for patients without coronavirus. But President Trump approved Governor Cuomo's request to convert it once again, now taking on patients with COVID-19 as the number of cases in New York State increases dramatically. This morning, America's growing pandemic is rapidly consuming precious supplies. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo warning the state could run out of life-saving ventilators in less than a week. If a person comes in and needs a ventilator and you don't have a ventilator, the person dies. That's the blunt uh, equation here. And right now we have a, a burn rate that would suggest we have about six days in the stockpile. But the federal stockpile is nearly depleted, and California's governor says 170 ventilators sent from the federal government did not work. Companies now scrambling to make new ventilators or refurbish old ones, not sure if they'll be able to get enough to patients in time. On to the next phase. Overwhelmed hospitals taking unprecedented steps to save lives. Wonderful. So she's still extubated and breathing easily, right? Yes, yeah, I'm able to. Wonderful. This cardiac ICU at New York's Mount Sinai converting into a unit for COVID patients only. I'd say one of the ups is um, we were able to transfer a patient off the unit. The U.S. death toll climbing above 6,000. Overnight, New York City's mayor joining Los Angeles, the nation's two largest cities advising residents to wear face coverings in public. It could be a scarf. Uh, it could be something you create yourself at home. It could be a bandana. We don't want you to use uh, the kinds of masks that our first responders need, that our health care workers need. The White House is expected to release formal guidelines soon, but Dr. Deborah Burks of the Coronavirus Task Force saying masks are not a substitute for social distancing. The most important thing is the social distancing and washing your hands. And we don't want people to get an artificial sense of protection because they're behind a mask. Across America, health officials fear new hotspots could emerge in states like Texas and Florida, which were slow to mandate social distancing guidelines. In Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp struggled to explain what prompted him to wait until Wednesday. Finding out that this virus is now transmitting before people see signs. Well, we didn't know that until the last 24 hours. This is a game changer. But doctors have warned for weeks that people without symptoms can spread the disease. The pandemic especially cruel to one family in Ohio. Three members dying in just three days. Katie Garbrandt losing both of her grandparents and uncle. Her stepfather now in the hospital. Listen to what you're being told. Take it seriously. Um, we want to spare any family we can from the trauma that we're going through. We can't have um, a funeral the proper way. We can't grieve with our friends and our family. Um, and it just makes everything 10 times worse and tougher. Unimaginable loss, but also reason to hope. <laughs> Amanda Palmachan's husband, Titu, leaving the hospital after nearly a month. <laughs> the 44-year-old father of three who was on a ventilator surviving COVID-19, reuniting with his wife and daughters. I got it. When I woke up, the only thing I saw was bad news. Because 5,000 people got this and 5,000 people died. So I'm glad I'm there because it gives some hope to other people that there is, there are some good stories out there. An emotional reunion there. Meantime, back here in New York, there is an issue that is of growing concern because the Navy hospital ship Comfort so far has only been able to take on a limited number of patients. So here's what they plan to do now, that they've converted the Javits Center here. They will take on those COVID-19 patients at this facility, and they will then begin to move some of the overflow patients here to that ship for further treatment. Michael? All right, thank you so much for that, Wit.